Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! Okay, so... I mentioned before how this is not the first time I tried streaming this game. The first time I tried streaming this game, I wound up getting exhausted from feeling overworked between this game and several others until I eventually blew up at one of the game creators. So, just to give you an idea of how much I was overworking myself, right here, right here is the point where I started one of those streams, and I did not end that stream until after the battle for Naraka, and I had no breaks during that entire stream. Keep that in mind as we go along here. And we are going along back to Naraka Palace because we have to talk about this big battle that is going to be coming up here real soon. We have the legendary Rudra Blade now and that is going to prove to be pretty dang handy in the coming battles. Or so that is the idea. And of course we got to make our way back up this. At least this place isn't too big. I kind of wonder, though, why this area is set up zigzaggy like this. wonder why it wasn't just a straight path up the middle. This may be the last breath that anyone in the Holy City ever takes. The army of the Dark... The Army of the Dark Lord has made it quite clear that it is hell-bent on completely destroying us all. Yet, we will conquer our fear of them and meet them face-to-face -face in battle nonetheless, to try to ensure that such a horrible tragedy will not come to pass as best as our faith in the light can carry us. My human friends of Avlinia's sister world, let's not make it an easy win for the forces of e evil, alright? Grin. Okie dokie. Oh! How long has this been here? Don't know, but I'll take it. Which one is this? Defense plus two. Here you go, Dusk. Consistently daydreaming sentry. Exclamation! Have you succeeded in rescuing the young polyester lady, Earthling children? Then please hurry to see His Majesty and the Queen right away. Just a sec, I'll talk to the other one first. Servitude-minded, but also rather lecherous sentry. Have you made the acquaintance of Princess Rachel? She is very beautiful, you know. I guess. Okay, uh, I could talk to more people right now, but let's just go ahead and move quickly on to this story. But I'll talk to you guys at least. Seems awfully quiet around this place, with nearly all of the knights of the, in the Holy Army already assembled outside of the city, preparing for the march. But there's a few still around in here somewhere, tending to last-minute tasks. Why don't you visit with them? Considering what lies ahead of them, they could probably use some cheering up. After we have the upcoming meeting. Tepid and I are to stay behind here and protect everyone whom has taken refuge inside the palace, in case anyone from the enemy army manages to get past you all and attack the city itself. And this is automatic? Ah, oh, darn it. I should have unequipped uh, William. Hey guys, I see you managed to land Paprika out of trouble, and you scored the Rudo Blade at the same time. I have to say that I am impressed. I didn't think you'd be able to handle both of these goals by yourselves. Well, it was kind of two birds with one stone sort of thing. Yeah, nice to see you again too, bro. Lynn, be polite to your own, um, what is the word you earthling kids use? Oh yes, right, your homeboys. 
We should be very grateful that you, they all came back alive from a terrible place like that. It was pretty terrible. Charmies more kindly says, My dear Paprika, I am happy that you have not become dinner for those awful monsters that haunt this continent. Please do not ever worry us by running off by yourself like that again. Paprika silently says to Charmies, Thank you, Lady Charmies. I won't. Good going, you all! I knew you could do it! Welcome back, my friends. Then and the others told me about where you had gone when I had arrived in town a few days ago. Hehe, <laughs> you little rascals. You had me worried to the point of chronic illness as always, heart. But thank the goddess that Paprika has been saved. To Sarah adjusts the rose in her hair. And I am also glad to see that you are looking well, my dear Admiral. It's been quite a while. I must commend you in particular for having gone to such lengths to rescue your faithful servant. You are truly a man of gallance and nobility, William. Paprika blushes. Faithful? I do not live up to the praise of the most noble and enchanting lass of the elven race, my lady. It is only because of loyal friends like Paprika and yourselves that I am any kind of man at all. You children have proven yourselves to be heroes yet again, and you too, Admiral William. First you have saved the Holy Priestess, and now little Paprika. And on top of that, you are also willing to sacrifice your own lives to protect all of the Holy City when you have no previous tie to any of us whatsoever. Is there anything other than kindness and compassion within your hearts? Um, don't answer that. They all say, thank you very much, your majesties. Jersey shyly says with a small wave, Um, hello everyone. I'm glad you all are okay. Huh? Jersey is here too? I wonder. Ari says out loud, The entire gang is here. What, all of you are planning on joining in this great battle against evil for the liberation of all of the Yuzuki Plains? In that case, where the heck is old Panaka and Sam, and our two cynical bookworms from the mysterious Winters family? <laughs> Jersey lowers her head. Um, Uri? I know you didn't mean any harm by that past statement, especially, I hope, the part about Sile and Lair Lyle being cynic-minded people who spend too much time in books, but I think that everyone here really is of the mindset to do whatever they can to help us protect their beloved holy city. You should not say things like that so carelessly, okay? Sorry, Prian. You are right about that. I'm gonna side with Uri again on this one. Sometimes we need a light-hearted moment like that, especially whenever we're about to talk about who knows how many people dying? Miss Paprika, we are glad that you have been found safe and sound. We understand that your heart held only the best of intentions, and we certainly appreciate that you were willing to do so selflessly risk your life to be of any help that you could possibly be to all of those Ovenians that Serena has specifically placed in you in this world to look after. However, you must remember that just being plain reckless helps nothing. Please don't feel that you are too much of a burden to ask these loyal friends of yours here to help you next time. I am certain that they would never turn you away. Paprika bows. You are wise to speak such words, your majesty, and I will most certainly heed them should any dilemma ever cross my path again. Thank you for your understanding. I apologize to all of you here in all possible humility for what I have done. 
I am beyond blessed that a mere creature of fairydom with so immature a spirit like myself is cared for by so many. Having lived in this world since its dawning, and created to be as a maternal sort of guardian to all other races in Alvenia, I feel that I should be much wiser than this. You know, you got a point. You've been here for, what, thousands, possibly tens of thousands of years? And you didn't think through about this? Please hold your head up, my dear. As the forerunners of the entire demi-human race, you and the rest of your kind are very much like mothers to many of us. You are creatures of magic, like all demi-humans. Thus, many breeds of Elvenians would not exist had it not been for the star birth of the polyester race. It is a pity that so few of your kind remain on this planet by now, Paprika, but we do hope that those who still exist will manage to stay around for a really long time to come. Actually, continuing my previous thought, I suppose I can't blame her too much considering this world has been pretty peaceful up until this point. So she doesn't exactly have experience with this sort of danger yet. Take heart, Paprika. You are much wiser than you may believe, and all Alvenians need you as much as they do each other. By the way, children, and Admiral William too, for that matter, I must sincerely beg your forgiveness on behalf of my daughter, the Queen, and myself. For a moment there, I thought he was saying that the Queen was his daughter. That would have been weird. What do you mean, Your Majesty? Well, we had not realized the truth about the nature of the sword spirit that occupied the Ruta Blade at the time that the royal family had unwisely requested that you try to gain the sword over to our side in order to oppose the leader of the enemy army, Gorgon Ghidra. I can't imagine that such a demonic spirit was the weakest or most passive opponent you've ever faced. We ask your forgiveness for having placed you in such tremendous danger like that. It wasn't until the young elf woman, Tessera, had arrived in town and acquired of why we sent you far away from Naraka that we learned what it truly meant for a living soul to face the sword spirit. It's alright. After all, Paprika had gone to Rudra's shrine for the very same reason that you were intending to send us there, and she couldn't have known any better about Ruda than the Foxlund family did. We were going to have to go up against the sword no matter what the case in order to save Paprika from being slain by him. And it also was not the toughest boss we fought so far. Granted, RNG was very helpful with that. Speaking of that, just how and why did you come to Naraka anyway, Tessera? Wasn't it too dangerous for a civilian like yourself to travel out of meadows with monsters so densely populated in the forests around there? And what about Sam and your grandfather? Will they be alright without you? You are right to ask that, Uri, but there is no need to worry. I escorted my little brother back home from meadows personally before I had embarked on the journey here. How? We were making a big deal about how the trail was dangerous. Well, I, I suppose we also mentioned that it was less dangerous now that those bosses were no longer wandering around, so... I guess it's not as dangerous as it was when this journey started. In fact, by now, there are so few monsters still roaming the east half of Lelia that I did not feel too unsafe to risk traveling out of the Forest Elves settlement and my small abilities and destructive magic luckily proved enough to ensure the safety of Sam and myself. Thanks to you four Earthling kitties, the darkness is disappearing faster and faster from the North Continent every day. That's good to hear. Was Sam very disappointed to have to say goodbye to you again so soon? Well, remember that it has been nearly 12 days since we last met in Meadows, and I only arrived here yesterday, so I didn't so I did get the chance to spend a few days with Sam before I made the decision to leave. He admitted that it was more important for me to help the Naraka Knights nice in their battle with my credentials as a field medic, 
and he felt it necessary to go back and help Elenia look for after her grandfather. We still haven't managed to find an effective cure for his cause of tuberculosis, unfortunately. So, you will be here acting as the army's nurse for the duration of the fight? Yes. Her Majesty and the Good King have graciously recognized my value in the assumption of this role. Alright, now that we are all back here together, shall we re re review the final draft that has been proposed by Miss Hartshorn and the Princess for the defensive operation Nareka shall take against its aggressors? Harry, Dusk, and Harrison, since you three have only just returned, you may not be aware of the tactical change that has been made in our basic form of attack. I first proposed that we should hold off engagement with the enemy until they had arrived all the way to the gates of the Holy City itself, in order that we may have the advantage of fighting in familiar surroundings. However, Miss Hartshorn wisely pointed out that this plan would surely maximize unnecessary damage to our beautiful city in the middle of the struggle, as well as endanger most of the civilians who are in hiding. The enemy, after all, is just as concerned with the complete destruction of the entire kingdom itself as it is with the deaths of all Naraka knights who are planning to stand in its way. Thus, fighting here is definitely the wrong course to take. Jersey? It is not difficult for everyone present to see the nervous lack of confidence on Jersey's face. Um, right. You see, when my dear king and queen had identified where the enemy was, um, currently positioned on the Yuzuki Plains as of this morning, I guess that we should be able to intercept them on a narrow bridge of land that stretches across the lake located about 50 miles west of here. That is, if our army was to march out in the enemy's direction early, tomorrow morning. You were able to figure out something that precise by yourself? Wow, that must have taken some serious mathematical skills and extensive knowledge of the Yuzuki Plains topography for you to calculate that. The education you had acquired in Raytha was not done in vain, was it, Miss Jersey? Still, you couldn't be... Jersey blushes from self-consciousness. Well, yes, I... I suppose. If we can intercept Gorgon's fortress, forces on that bridge, then not all divisions in either side's army will be able to engage their opponents outright. There will not be enough room for everyone to fight at once. With this in mind, it can be assumed that, while those fighting in the front row and the medics supporting them are kept busy, all soldiers in the back row who are skilled in archery will be able to safely concentrate their efforts in reducing the numbers of all those who will, at the time, also be on standby in Gorgon's army. This way, Miss Tessera and the other medics under her command will be able to better keep all of our warriors fighting on the front line in standing condition. The enemy won't have the same advantage, since ogres are notoriously inept at using the bow and arrow. Quite clever of you, Jersey. You seem to know a lot about this kind of thing, even if you don't look it. Thanks. But should any creature who is female possess the appearance of a soldier? Nervous giggle. Mary, you and your three friends' assignment for this battle, as we, as was discussed earlier during our last meeting, has not changed with Jersey's proposal. I wish to confirm this one last time. Is what we are asking of you for acceptable? You have no reservations whatsoever? Yes. We fully understand the task that the royal family has given to accomplish for the sake of the holy city. We are in your debt, children of Earth.
Now then, may we also now confirm each of the individual roles that everyone here has chosen to assume in the services of the Knights of the Naraka Holy Army? Bliss Rune, you will be participating in the battle directly as commander of our side's lead strike force, and you will be accompanied by the majority of our available nurses. Please try your best to keep your men from falling under the control of all fear that our much stronger opponents may try to use against us, as we are depending upon your group to be the banner of courage that the rest of the Naraka Knights will follow. Mr. Sarah Allegra, we have accepted your request to act as one of the Holy Army's medics for the battle, and we are grateful for your selfless kindness in wanting to help us in such a big way. We feel that your skill in the application of herbs to the field of medicine will be extremely vital to saving many of our knights from perishing in combat. Still, you must be aware that you will be placing yourself in just as much danger as any of the ones actually fighting will be in. May Serena grant you the bravery and perseverance to run headlong into such danger and be the angel of mercy for as many souls that you see fallen on the battlefield as you possibly can. It is up to you on how and to whom you will direct the nurses serving under you, but please try to keep a special eye on Princess Rachel and her particular unit of knights. Bless you for this noble sacrifice that you as an alien to Naraka have selflessly chosen to make for us, my dear. I will always offer my hand and friendship to the Holy City, Your Majesty. I am forever the willing servant of the Foxloon Royal Family, for I place my trust in all three of its members as rulers of benevolence and wisdom sent to us all from the heavens themselves. Admiral William, since many of your friends have graciously offered to fight alongside the Naraka Knights, you are the only one left suitable for the task that the Queen and I wish to ask for, ask of you. Your servant is listening, Your Majesty. Since this battle is to be fought over the water, your Rosalina can be used to act as a kind of scout to keep tabs on the fighting styles, changing formations and progressive movements and numbers on the opposing army. Under the circumstances, even our band of elven scouts would not be able to accomplish as much as the Leviathan fleet's ship could in this matter. If you are willing to help us, then perhaps we can formulate the details of this plan later on after this meeting. I will be happy to be of service. Wonderful, Miss Paprika. Paprika has one of them teardrops. Y yes, Your Highness? We would not wish to deliberately leave you out of the battle when you have already made known the strength of your desire to help us fight off this darkness that threatens us. So I have thought of a way in which you may actually be able to assist Uri and the others in the difficult fight they must face by suppressing the power of our enemy's main leader when he attacks. This will require a very unique means of magic, but you, as a member of the magical race, just may possess the abilities to pull it off, while still maintaining a safe distance from the battle. Would you be so kind as to meet with me later this evening to devise the precise, the precise spell required to achieve this goal? Paprika happily responds, Yes, of course, your highness. I'll do whatever I can to help fight against this evil. Princess Rachel, my daughter, though I, as both the King of the Holy City and your father, cannot easily grant your request to do this, you understand your instructions given forthwith as the leader of the Archer Company designated to provide co cover for the 3rd and 7th Brigades of the Holy Army, correct? Yes, fa- I mean, yes, my king. No, no, you can just- Call him father, that's what he is. 
You will direct your company to aim their arrows at any mages on the enemy side that are sighted and within firing range, and those whose magics are directed towards you and your archers or the knights you are guarding must take first priority in them eliminating. And remember, my dear Rachel, you have given your solemn promise to us that, in return for the consent of your mother and myself that you take part in this battle, you will direct your company into full retreat and request that your personal guards take you out of harm's way if you catch sight of any of the heavily armored lancers from the enemy army coming straight for you, as you and your soldiers will not be able to contend with them. I will honor my promise that I have given in return for your trust, my honored king and queen. Just call them ma'am and dad, seriously. You're their daughter, you shouldn't have to be all humble and unworthy like all the other peasants out there apparently have to be. And finally, Miss Hartshorn, you and the nine others of the White Hand Division, as the only citizens in all of the kingdom who are able to wield magic, Though you are but a young woman with magical powers not yet developed enough for us to consider you an able soldier for a battlefield, we have at least decided, with some reluctance out of worry for your innocent life, that we will allow you to join the rest of the White Hand, which was created for the express purpose of guarding the flanks of our Earthling friends from all enemy attacks as they proceed forward through the front lines to find and defeat Gorgon Ghidra. You are still very, very young, Miss Hartshorn, at an age still considered far from mature and even more tender than the ages of Uri and the other three Earth children. You understand that we are not of the opinion that you are far enough out of childhood to ever know the horrors of fighting. In fact, you are still just a child, and you subject yourself to an even greater risk of falling in this battle than do any of the Nareka Knights. Especially considering your designated role as one of just ten members of the White Hand who are to protect the warriors from Earth with their arcane abilities. Queen Lorana stands. Jersey Hartshorn, because we cannot help but sympathize with your desire to take matters into your own hands to protect all that you hold dear, just as Paprika did. The king and I will still grant you this noble desire of yours, in spite of its implications. Are you still resolved to fight? What the- Jersey can't possibly be serious. She can't be intending to be an actual part of the fighting. Jersey averts her eyes. Ye yes my queen. Understood. Everyone here who has asked to be given each of these roles understands and accepts them? Everyone bows. Yes, your majesty. By the way, in regards to the queen standing up, I can't help but wonder if it would have been more effective to have her step out of her seat. Then, sleep well on this night, brave leaders of the forces of the light who will guide the children of the goddess into a great battle against a powerful and unholy enemy for the fate of an entire nation. We will ride forth into heart of the Yuzuki Plains to meet the enemy at exactly 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Dismissed! Everyone salutes. Your Majesties!